Hello, I'm Bert WF7i, and I want to do a little video on the Bidex 20 kit by Hendrix that I just uh, finished here about two weeks ago. Um, I wanted to do kind of, well, just a brief background about the kit. Um, then I wanted to kind of show you the inside of it just briefly and um, put it on the air and hopefully make a contact while I'm videoing it. Although, um, not sure if I'm going to pull that off or not, we'll see. Uh, but I bought the kit back in about 2009. It's not a new kit. Uh, I think Hendrix may have come out with it, uh, qrpkits.com, uh, probably back in 2008, I think is what it said. Um, but I never got around to building it, uh, just had other things going on, and I finally decided late last year, early this year, in 2014, that I would go ahead and, and finish the kit. <laughs> I wanted to try to get it going. Um, the reason I bought it, I think, originally was um, I'd been taking some rigs up into the mountains uh, when I go hiking and I would set up a little table and some batteries and a, a little dipole antenna and uh, I've been doing that with CW but I didn't have a sideband rig and I had uh, you know I have like store-bought you know Kenwood Yesu type rigs but they're really heavy and they take up a lot of current consumption and I didn't want to be dealing with hauling around a giant battery so uh, I was kind of looking in the market for something that I could uh, put together maybe as a kit that would have lower current consumption I might be able to you know run off some batteries and also lightweight I really wanted something lighter weight and so I was looking for QRP primarily um, lower power lower weight um, smaller type things I came across uh, the Bidex 20 kit um, originally Bidex 20 was designed by uh, Ashar Farhan um, in India um, this kit was developed, I think, a year or two later by the people at QRP Kits. And, uh, you know, it had some pretty good reviews, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, I decided this year when I built it that I wanted to kind of get involved in, in the circuits uh, within the kit a little bit and not just strictly, you know, plow through the stuffing of the board and getting it on the air. I wanted to try to learn a little bit about it. And I think I did learn quite a bit. Um, most of that is in my blog which I'll link to below if you haven't already been there. Um, there's still a lot that I still want to learn, especially about amplifiers and, and the PA. Um, it uses two IRF 510s in push-pull, and I think the original far-hand circuit was a single 510. Um, beyond that, though, uh, you know, I need to, I still need to do a little learnings there, but I, you know, I figured out a lot, a lot about balanced modulators, which I didn't really didn't know too much about for this uh, product detectors, balance modulators, even just toroids, toroidal transformers. Um, spent some time with the uh, microphone amplifier circuit. I actually had to make a change to that circuit to accommodate my microphone. Um, so you know, there's a lot of little things. Most of it I talk about in my blog, but it was a it was a great educational thing for me and uh, um, you know a lot of fun to, to get it up and running. And I've already made some contacts. Uh, first contact I made was with a station in uh, in Italy. Um, had no trouble copying me at all. Got him on the first call. I think there was even a little pile up, which was kind of amazing. Um, there's a station in Canada, and then there was a station in, uh, I think the third contact uh, was a station in Great Britain. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a closer view of the rig and just kind of show you some of the external and out outside features of the, of the box and things like that and the circuit inside. So I'm back. Here is the Bidex 20. Um, this is my Bidex 20 kit that I've assembled. Um, I don't have the lid screwed on yet, so I can take the lid off and show you some things. Um, I'll lift it up here so you can kind of see the front panel maybe a little better. Um, but this is uh, the Hendrix kit. Um, very simple controls. You have the main tuning, fine tuning. There's a volume, which also serves as an off-on switch. Um, I have a frequency counter here. I went ahead and bought, there's a, an optional kit you can buy, frequency counter display, um, that kind of came along with the kit, so I went ahead and got that option. Um, microphone input, and I added a push-to-talk button, um, which is also serves as a transmit-receive switch. Um, so when I flip that on, I immediately uh, have signal from the microphone coming into the rig. Microphone is just a junk box mic I've had laying around in my junk box for 20 years probably or more. Um, it's Radio Shack. I think it's an MC3 
MS3. <laughs> um, it puts out about, uh, uh, I think I mentioned about 15 milliwatts typically peak to peak, or millivolts, sorry, peak to peak um, with typical audio. Uh, if you whistle or yell, you can get up to like 40, but uh, um, that's kind of pretty pretty standard output, dynamic microphone type thing. Uh, and uh, it, it works okay as long as you, you have to make some modifications to the uh, the microphone amplifier, um, but I can talk more about that another time. Um, so the back of the rig, I just got um, you know some power connections. I, I like the banana plugs because they have a lot of hookup cables that use them in the shack, and it's just convenient. Kit comes with a little DC plug like this style here. Um, I also have some plugs with that with battery packs that I use. Um, it comes with a BNC connector on the back, which I just adapted for a PL259 coax. Speaker comes off the top here, has a little grill, a little hole, holes drilled in the, the, the top here for that. So uh, let me go ahead and I'll probably go ahead and change the camera angle so you can see inside a little better. Okay, just a quick tour of the innards here. Um, I've actually got an antenna hooked up, so it's receiving 20 meter signals as we speak. Um, board's pretty small and pretty much everything is on the board. It fits pretty snugly in this box here. Um, little display is screwed on here at the front. There's a couple little standoff type things they put into the box for me. The Polyvericon main tuning capacitor is over here. Um, to get a wider tuning range you can short together uh, two of the sets of plates, which is what I did. Um, gives me most of the 20 meter band, I think except for about 30 kilohertz or so, and I'm not going to probably worry about trying to pull that last 30 kilohertz into the picture. Um, all this is just hookup wiring, um, going to the various controls. Um, the RF output from the PA comes out over here. I have a little section of some real thin coaxial cable I got from Radio Shack. I don't even know the part number of that, but it came originally with a little uh, BNC connector already soldered on. But it's allowed me to, to make several little jumpers for kit radios, um, so it was a pretty good investment. I think it was 7 or $8 or something. It allows you to have a shielded connection from the RF output to the BNC over here. Um, I went ahead and put in a 4 amp fuse, um, typically on transmit. Um, with the output I'm putting out, which is between 5 and probably 10 watt peak, um, 5 to 7 watt average power, I would say. For that level of power, um, I'm usually below 2 amps. I might just be hitting 2 amps sometimes on peaks, but typically below 2. So I put in a 4 amp fuse here with the thought that, you know, if some runaway oscillation happens and it really starts drawing a lot of current, it'll blow the fuse, but normally it's not going to blow it. Um, and I have had a couple problems with that, um, with some oscillations breaking out when I uh, had the drive adjust a little high. And, I th and there's some feedback issues with this radio, I believe, that I'm probably not going to fix um, with this kit. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I think uh, 5 to 10 watts is fine, and I'm, I'm happy with that level of output. I know some guys are able to get 15 to 20 out of it. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that without the oscillations. So um, I may shoot for that with a future kit. Uh, or future build of my own on, on some clad where I can isolate things and move things around but I'm happy with this um, <clears throat> you know it, it's it definitely does the job I've been out in the air with it a few times and it, you know it's it is what it is and I, I think it works quite well so um, probably not a whole lot more I can point out here um, that's of interest to anybody um, you know you can see the IF filter the, the four IF uh, filter crystals here, the 11 megahertz crystals. Um, yeah, the, the LM386 uh, audio amp chip, and um, you know, really just the rest of it is mostly just uh, you know BJT transistors and toroids and capacitors and uh, you know garden variety resistors. It's a really nice circuit in that regard. There's really no special parts to speak of. On the IRF 510s, you can get at Radio Shack. Oop. I I bumped the camera, but uh, these are the two 510s over here with the heat sink. Now, I did have to uh, use my own hardware to mount those to the sink. I didn't see any in the kit for that. Um, I also had to use some heat sink, heat sink paste um, to bond to the heat sink. Um, but uh, 
but it's worked out well. Um, I only blew one 510 one time because I had inadvertently set a drive level wrong and I think the output was trying to push like 30 watts or something and it just went crazy and blew it out. So, But normally um, I haven't had any issue with that. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the box on, the lid back on the box, and uh, see if I can make a contact. Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India QRP. Sugar Mike 5, okay? Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India QRP 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 QRP, QRP station again Roger, it's Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India QRP Uh, negative, it's Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India. Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India, QRP. Uh, negative, Foxtrot Germany, Foxtrot Germany, eh? It's Foxtrot 7 India. Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India. Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India. USB frequency, okay. Whiskey Foxtrot 7 India, you're a uh, 5x4, 5x4 real in the north part of Italy, okay? QSL, 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 you are 5x9, five 5x9, nine, five 59 in Virginia, Virginia, running 5 watts, 5 watts, QSL? Okay, thank you so much, excellent, uh, you are a 5x4, five 5x4, four, five four. I, I understand, okay, also, sorry, only 5 watts, uh, real signal 5x4, very compliment, okay, my name is Andy. Alpha November Delta Yankee, UTH in Mantova City, Mantova Little Town near Milano. Uh, back to you. Uh, thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bert, Bravo, Echo, Romeo, Tango, and uh, running a BitX20 uh, SSB transceiver, 20 meter kit radio here. Uh, thank you very much for the contact, and uh, best of 73, uh, Italy Zulu 2, Sierra, Quebec, Sierra, from Whiskey Foxtrot 7, India. Okay, you have 5x7, thank you, 5x7, Bert, uh, very excellent, only 5 watts, uh, thank you so much, beautiful contact with you in QRP, and uh, see you soon on frequency, okay, good luck, Whiskey Foxtrot 7, Italy, stroke QRP, Italy, Zulu 2, Sierra, Quebec, Sierra, 73, Bert. 73, Andy, thank you. Yeah, Zulu 2, Sierra, Quebec, Sierra, QRZ. 